Are you guys ready for the solar eclipse? Hey there everybody. I am excited. I'm outside and I made a couple purchases today um, preparing for the solar eclipse coming up on the 21st and I kind of wanted to just do a little bit of a um, solar eclipse prep video or video log kind of show what I'm using to attempt to document this solar eclipse and yeah one of my chickens is in the background. <laughs> The other two in front of me probably making some noise. I apologize. Anyway, I have a couple props out here and um, tools I'm going to be using. I'm going to go over those and explain what I'm going to try to do on Monday. Um, Monday the 21st, August 21st. I have, I am supposed to be working 6 a.m. to 3 that day, but I requested to be able to leave at 1 because um, according to where I live, which is Eastern Standard Time, I live in Pennsylvania. Uh, the eclipse is going to be starting around, I think it's 1.14 or 1.17 um, in the afternoon. And um, I'm going to probably get home around 1.30, but I'm gonna have everything prepared and set up so that uh, as soon as I get home, I can run out here to the backyard and uh, get myself situated and hopefully capture about two hours to two hours and 15 minutes of the eclipse. It's supposed to start, like I said, I think it's 1.14 or around 1.17 p.m. And um, it's supposed to run for two and a half hours. So if everything goes smoothly, I should be able to get some pretty good documentation. I'm gonna attempt to do photography and some video. So we'll see. I'm gonna show you guys what I purchased to help me with this um, endeavor, this adventure. I'm very much looking forward to it. In fact, one of the things I was wearing earlier, um, they're called blazing goggles, and my face is probably red from it because they uh, fit kind of weird. Anyway, I'll show you guys, and I'm sure that you'll think it's hilarious, but I think they're going to work. <laughs> so that's what we're going to go over. Okay, so my first weapon of choice, and I'm going to be doing this all with my left hand. This is not how I would normally hold this, um, is going to be my camera. I do not have a P900. This is a Canon SX50. I do have an older Canon, um, an SI15, uh, but this has a little bit better as far as the megapixels and the zoom capability. Um, but I think it'll work for what I need to do. I don't need to see, I just wanna be able to zoom in um, in a filtered sort of way and record slash photograph what's going on with the Eclipse. Um, I do have a nice tripod. I'll show you guys that in a minute. I'll show you the setup I'll have. But this is my camera. Um, some of the other videos you guys have watched me do, like the time lapse um, videos of the clouds and moon photography, things like that, have been done with this camera. So this will be my first weapon of choice. <laughs> I'm going to attempt. I'm going to be working on this until the weekend. I don't know how I'm going to attach it. Maybe even something as simple as a rubber band. But I purchased um, what's called uh, welder's lens or welder's glass. Where I work, I got a discount on this. And when you use it to look at the sun, of course, it's a, a filter just because you use this sort of thing on a welder's helmet. Um, and it helps you from getting not getting lens flare or a, a flare from the... Uh, welding like a welding flare so it doesn't burn your eyes so this should protect my camera and my eyes whenever I'm videotaping and um, doing the photography this was very inexpensive if you still have time you want to go out and um, get something like this I think it was like a little under five dollars for me to purchase this <laughs> I can't stop laughing at myself <laughs> how you doing oh hi buddy that's my logger, that's my puppy. So these are called brazing goggles or brazing glasses. Um, they're used predominantly for brazing. Um, but whenever I was looking up the um, 
like the reviews and the specifications on these glasses, a lot of people said that they were too dark and that they would be better used um, for arc welding. And uh, I believe that that's going to protect my eyes even better um, because you want something like welder's glass, um, something that's going to protect your eyes like you would be when you're looking or doing welding. So um, these are just going to be used in between while I'm looking through the camera with the welder's lens and then uh, as I look away and want to look at the sun with just my eyes instead of through the camera I'm going to use these to protect my eyes. This is what they look like. I can't even see the camera right now. It's really odd. I can just a little bit see a little bit of a reflection. Um, but they are very, very dark. But when I look at the sun, it's very easy to look at, look into the sun. It makes everything green, just to give you a perspective. I'm just looking at the camera, and actually the sun is getting, is making its exit for me right now. It's around 7, 7.30, something like that. Um, but I'm just going to, without mounting this to the camera, see how this is going to work and kind of show how it's going to be filtering for us. This is going to be the welder's lens going in front. Um, and of course I can't mess with the focus right now. That's not too bad because my hand is busy with my cell phone. But I think I can work with this and I can manually focus. Um, very nice. I'm going to try siliconing or something to seal this piece of this lens onto the front of my camera so that I can zoom in and out um, with ease. Whew, there's the difference. And of course the sun's probably going to, it's going to be much closer to me um, at its, closer to its zenith. Uh, and it will be not higher in the sky, but seem like it's higher in the sky because it's closer to me. So I'm going to have to be able to, my camera's got to be mobile, you know, I'm going to have to be able to tilt it um, at, a, at a much sharper angle. So I definitely need to figure out a way to get this welder's lens to actually attach to um, my camera. So this is my camera. Uh, this will be my tripod setup. And I'm probably just going to sit on a little garden stool that I have. Um, anyway, nothing too fancy, but I'm hoping it will do the trick. I'm very excited to attempt this. I think we can all agree that on a flat earth model, the sun and moon are similar in size. And also that the moon creates its own light and possibly a cooling light but that the sun and moon do have a synergistic relationship, um, a positive and a negative or a cathode diode sort of relationship to each other. A solar day consists of the sun circling or cycling the earth in 24 hours. A lunar day consists of the moon circling or cycling the earth in 24 hours and 50 minutes. The moon moves slower and cycles slower than the sun. We know that the moon loses about 11 degrees in the sky, putting distance between itself and the sun each day. When the sun and moon surpass each other and are the closest during their cycling, this is when you have a new moon and the moon has no light. As the moon lags behind the sun's cycle, we get the crescent moon, we get the waxing crescent moon, and then we start to create the gibbous waxing moon, and then when it is 180 degrees opposite of the sun, we have a full moon, and then the cycle starts all over. Once the full moon is finished, and the sun starts catching back up with the moon's cycle, because the moon is moving slower, the moon starts to wane and lose its light. It goes to a gibbous waning moon and then a crescent waning moon. And then it makes its way to a new moon once again as its cycling gets the closest to the sun. Perhaps when we have a solar eclipse, the moon is actually moving in front of the sun instead of always behind it. Does the sun charge the moon? When the moon is at its closest cycling, past the sun, whether it's behind it or in front of it. It's a new moon and has lost all its light. It gains its charge. It starts gaining light for the next 14 days until it is fully lit and at its brightest during a full moon. 
and then it starts losing its charge once again, making its way back to the sun, possibly to charge back up. If everything I have just explained is correct, and of course the flat earth model is correct, and the sun and the moon cycle above us, and they are similar in size, and the moon moves slower than the sun, and possibly this moon will be moving in front of the sun during this eclipse, then this model that we've been watching for the last few minutes makes complete sense. The moon moves slower, it will be moving west to east. The shadow will be moving west to east. And all of this will make complete sense. And I believe if this is in fact what we are going to witness, and I'm so excited to have the opportunity to document this, that this is a huge proof, a huge amount of evidence towards a flat stationary Earth with two luminaries similar size that were put here and placed here for us to cycle above us.